Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of Leak Code Live. Today I'm gonna try something really new, and I literally just thought about this like 10 minutes ago. You know, a lot of you have all been following me, and my whole thing has been to do, or try and do every single Leak Code question on the platform, and I've had a ton of fun doing that. I mean, we started on July 16th at question zero, and we've amassed 274 questions since then. However, Something new that I want to try out, and I know this sort of goes against the original challenge. The original challenge was to do them all in order, but at least to do all of them. Now I'm going to amend the challenge a little bit, and I'm going to have a little bit of fun with it today just to see how we fare. But I'm going to do medium questions today. That's right. So if you were ever watching this stream thinking, why isn't this person doing medium questions? We know that the majority of the value of these questions comes from medium questions, you know, can we just start doing them? I don't want to wait until easy. So because of this, let me see, it looks like I'm actually having some issues with my stream. Sorry to cut the, the spiel off right there in the beginning, but let me let me check something here. Let's go to our analytics, make sure everything's good. Excellent connection, it says. Okay, yeah, maybe that was just a blip. Anyway, I'm gonna start doing some medium questions today. And I think something I wanna try out is Maybe like on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I do easy questions, and on Tuesday and Thursday, I do medium questions. That way I can sort of mix things up a little bit, make it a little more interesting for the audience, and also give content for those of you out there that are looking into doing medium questions. So without further ado, this is gonna be a little bit fun because now we're really starting, we're gonna be starting sort of from ground zero again, right? So let us go here to algorithms. We're going to do the same thing we do before, but now for medium, for difficulty, we're going to choose medium. And for acceptance, we're going to do the same sorting. And let's just start it off. So there's a lot of premium questions already up here. Oh, wait, and I should also make sure. OK, so I guess design SQL is an algorithm question, not, not just a SQL or database question. So we're going to start with this first one here. The same rules apply. We're going to try and do high quality medium questions. If we feel like something is too crazy or you know the like to dislike ratio is really bad then we'll go ahead and skip it if we're spending too much time i'm probably going to allot myself 30 minutes per each one of these questions and we'll see how many we can do so let's just see this first medium question i'm pretty excited to get into this i'm not sure why youtube is ex explaining i'm not sure why youtube is complaining let me see, for everyone that's watching, are you all experiencing some lag or any sort of like weird buffer going on? I don't I don't know of anything else that's like running on my machine that could cause any issues. I'm still seeing an excellent connection on my end. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. This first one was already, we're already starting off at maybe not the best foot. And I feel like I've tried to do this one before and it just didn't click for me. But now maybe with all this easy experience that we've done, maybe it has. So let's see what we got. So a decimal number is called deci-binary if each of its digits is either a zero or a one without any leading zeros. For example, 101 and 1100 are deci-binary, while 112 and 3001 are not. Given a string n that represents a positive decimal integer, return the minimum number of positive deci-binary numbers needed so that they sum up to n. Okay. So... Let's think about this. To me, it almost sounds like if we know that we need without any leading zeros, so it can never be, okay, one, one, one. It always needs to be at least a one in front. I almost feel like we want to either, let me see, eight. It seems to me like, for example, like one, zero, and these are deci-binary, these are his digits. So this are, these are considered like, okay, deci-binary because it's still a decimal representation, but with only binary numbers like one and zero. So one thing that I would like to try out is like to get the minimum, I should try and add as many like one ones as I can. Cause I do one, 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 that's 22. If I did another one, one, that would be 33. So then we just do one zero to subtract one and get 32. Now for eight, two, seven, three, four, Right? I mean, could we just keep, like, how many ones could we add? One, 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 one. That would be two, 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 right? Like, it would just kind of keep going in that direction. 
that's four 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 five 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 six 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 seven 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 so eight 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 right like this one two three four five if we do eight 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 like this it ends up being too much let me see am i still getting still getting issues here three minutes ago i think i think we're going to be good on the stream apologies for having to continually like say anything I still see an excellent connection on YouTube's end. If anyone is experiencing lag, just please let me know. It'll pop up on the chat and I can see it. Just to see if I can like try something. Okay, so to me, it's like I always want to try and take the biggest number. And then how many of the biggest ones can I take? Like try as many of the big ones. Okay, so we're at eight big ones. I can't do that one. So then let's see like... Okay, this one is 7777, so I could do that, right? And then what's like the next biggest one? We can have 1110. This would just give us 8888, right? So is it just like we need all these to be, let me see. Because if we do this, this would be what? 88887, but we still need for it to be less than 34 here. So if then from there, we just also made this a zero, what would this be? Then that's just one or eight, eight, seven, seven. And then we can make this eight, eight, seven, seven, seven. And then I guess we kind of have to like keep going backwards this way, right? Almost like, so let me try to see if I can think about the, the formula here. It's almost like I want to go as high as I can for as long as I can. And then at some point I'll reach a break a breaking point at that breaking point what is it that we want to do do we just like slowly start decrementing these one by one the minimum number of positive deci binary numbers needed so they sum up to n let me see if i needed eight i would at least need to make it this far right and that's one two three four five six seven eight okay how about 32? I can pick three and I'll get there. Two, okay, for this one, what would it be though? I'm very curious for this one, right? Because if we think about the most significant one, I can have all ones here. I feel like this, this might not be a one per each one of these digits, but as soon as I do this, all these become two, 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 so that's fine. So how many do I need to get to the next one? Now it's just a matter of like, how many times can I subtract to still get a two, but still have a seven here? And apparently it's nine. So how do we figure that piece out? Minimum number of positive deci binary numbers needed so that they sum up to n. Also, like, do we really need to worry about addition here? Can we, maybe I could do something with the string that if I just look at it from left to right, okay, that's eight. Let's see if I start sort of like toggling bits on and off. If I start thinking of it like that, like changing some to be zeros, others to be ones. Some can stay at ones, others can be zero. Eight, two, seven, three, four. Always take the biggest one. At some point we hit a limit and then we start backtracking. Like again, two, two, two. Actually two in this case still works. Uh, two, two, well, except for this one, zero. It doesn't work for this one. And what I mean by the zeros is, is like, if I do one, 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 like, right, we're gonna end up with two, 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 two. Like it works in this case, because these are each two. This is greater, 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 or the same. And then here's where it breaks. So it breaks here and it breaks here and it also breaks here. So do we just need to find like every place where I guess it's broken, if that makes any sense? Because eight, two, seven, three, four, if I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if we get eight, 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 we need each one to be greater than or equal to. If it's or rather no, not equal, uh greater than or equal to, yeah. Each one of these so the original number, if it's less, that's bad, right? That's how many we need to fix. But why is it eight here? This is eight, 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 eight. 
if I just do, okay, that's 8887, but then that's 7, that's 7, that's 7, that's still broken. So that they sum up to n. And also, I think what I'm, maybe what I'm missing out on is like, Am I am I thinking too narrowly to narrowly to think that I can only change it from Yeah, because you know what? This is bigger, but like instead of changing it from the smallest, I should try and change it from the bigger end, right? Cuz I can have 88888 eight, 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 or not 8, but like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8. If I'm left with this, oh, but it can't have any leading. That's why without any leading zeros. So I can't I can't make the, the front zero. And I feel like because of that, we necessarily have to change the back end, like the trailing section to be zeros. So if to 7777, seven, seven, we instead added, let me like remove all this so we can just focus on these up here. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Over here, like, okay, I can't do eight, because that's too large. What's the next best one? I mean, I need to at least be at eight, two. Even if I just did eight, so maybe it even shouldn't be seven, 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 seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can do an eight, but here I need to stay at zero. Yeah, that's where it becomes like tricky. So it doesn't it doesn't have to be like what I was trying to do is start from the right, like right to left toggle bits, but it really could be any combination of these, right? It could be one zero, that would give us like a what? An eight seven. That would be an eight seven, which is still not good. If I did one zero zero, that would still be seven seven. That's also not good. So really we probably have to start even lower here. Or maybe, maybe actually, what if we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then here we do one, two, right? And then we have all of them being zero. Here we have seven, four, five, six, seven. Here we have three, zero, 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 and then here we have four, one, two, three, four, zero, 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 zero. All right, wouldn't this be, right, because we're just adding eight, and we have two, I think, and this gives us actually answer eight. So maybe, hey, actually, maybe we're onto something here. Minimum partitions, like if we do 32, if we do 32, I can do one, 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 and then here I can just do two, one, one, zero. Right now, I guess the the real kicker comes here. Here I can do uh, one, one, but then what do we do here? Do I need? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, is it just going to be like? I need at least the greatest one out of all of them. Because one thing I have noticed here. The min, like I'm gonna need at least, hmm. Uh, is that always true though? M maybe this is this is a, a uh, man. I almost feel like it might be the greatest number in here, because that means if I have a nine, like how else can I get to this nine? No, I probably get the thing is I probably can get to a nine in another way. It doesn't have to be like this. Because this is one, two, three, four. This is six, and then seven, and then we can do like a three. We can do a four. Six. I hope it makes somewhat sense what I'm doing. Because my, my initial thought is like, well, is it just like the biggest number in this string? But maybe not. Can I, like how many numbers do we need for three? Do I need three? I need a one. And then here, I don't need one, two, three. 
if I wanted to make 13. Oh, but see this, this can't have a leading zero, right? I can't have a leading zero here. So then I guess that's where the theory breaks. So maybe it's not the largest number in the string. So maybe what we should do is like, okay, let's say, let's say I continue in this way, right? If I have one and three here, I try and do one, one, the next one would be zero and one. <clears throat> so is there, I guess we're just going to need to have more. Well, actually, do they give us a number that can be represented? Because what if it's, if it is 13, how else would we represent it if we can't have trailing zeros? Do they give us a number that we can necessarily represent? Minimum number needed so they sum up to n. Yeah, actually, I'm very curious about this. If I do 13, what is the answer for 13? Expected three? Am I thinking about this wrong without any leading zeros? Like leading zeros, a leading zero is, it comes in the front. I, I really hope that's the case. If not, I've been, because trailing sounds like it trails off, right? Pad leading zeros, yeah, okay. Okay, well let's, since all of these are, I mean, if I give it a, an arbitrary number, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, is this gonna be nine? Okay, so is the answer just the largest digit in this array? Or the largest digit in this string? I, I don't think it would be, but let's see. Let min equals zero. What's the range of numbers here from one? Okay, let's say the minimum is one for const, let's see, digit of n min, or rather max, Max equals math dot max of parse int digit or digit or max rather. I'm not really sure how I feel about this. I'm still I, I'm I'm still sort of like convinced that I don't know if we had I'm gonna have like a, a ton of numbers and then just like a nine. Like what, what should that give us? I'm just experimenting with test cases here, nine, 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 nine. So is it the case that it's just, well, there's only one way to find out guys. We're gonna click submit on our first easy, not easy question, medium question, and let's see what, what we get. Okay, I mean, that's awesome. That's really awesome because I'll tell you one thing. Like I've looked at this question before and I wasn't even even able to get to this point here. I saw this question and frankly, I gave up. So if you're watching this stream, I can promise you without a doubt that at least if you do easy questions, you'll gain the confidence to at least try questions and you'll probably think about them a little more critically if you at least do that. So I think at least I, I feel like I've built up some amount of resilience for these questions. So that's pretty neat. I'm definitely I'm definitely into that. So, I mean, let's just keep going with the thing. Now, obviously it, it looks like it's not very optimal. There's definitely something I'm missing. Now, because we know that medium questions, we get the most mileage out, out of them. I, I will be taking more time on these questions to go over discussion posts. So we can really try and understand what's happening here. Is there a better way for me to find out <clears throat> the biggest digit in this number? I mean, this is linear, but it looks to me like there's a way to do it even faster to find the biggest digit inside of here. Now, is there maybe, I mean, sometimes what we can do is we can like break early. So is there a way that we can break early from the algorithm if we've already found some number if that makes any sense oh you know what maybe maybe let me see three two i mean this could be if it was like three nine how about this one like eight two seven three four 
I'm curious if like the length can yield anything, but no, I can't, because we can still have a nine back here. So how would I even know if I'm just at the eight to not even at least check the nine? So it consists of only digits, does not contain any leading zeros and represents a positive integer. Zero or one without any leading zeros, for example, one zero one a deci binary, minimum number of positive deci binary numbers needed so that they sum up to n. The minimum number is going to be equal to the max digit inside of our string. What we've tried to do is scan the string linearly. We did one pass, and based on that pass, we came up with the largest digit. I'm just I'm thinking about a way to break early. Anyone have any suggestions? Because like in here, we could get to the nine first. And I guess I mean, if it's ever nine, then so be it like nine is only digits does not contain any. Yeah, this is a single digit. So I mean, if we get to nine, I guess we can just break early. Um, if we get to an eight, what does that mean? I mean, it doesn't really mean anything because we still don't even know if there's another nine. And I feel like randomly putting a nine in there is a little bit strange. 32, what does it mean for this number to be? You know what though, okay, wait a second. This, let me see, 32 and this has 82734. This has some long, again, I'm thinking of the length of the string. If the length of the string can yield anything else that's like interesting. Cause like the size of the number, like here, here, what do we know? Like we know that we can get up to nine, 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 nine. That's the max number. So the minimum that we would need is just the largest of them. We need at least as many to accommodate the largest digit. And these are also not, let me see, without any leading zeros. Given the string n that represents a positive decimal integer between the minimum number. Or, or, you know, perhaps this is the best conceivable runtime because I'm using a language like JavaScript because I've also seen that too, that JavaScript does things a little bit more slowly. It's not as fast as a language like C++. It doesn't have a lot of the tooling that some of the other languages have. So maybe that's the bottleneck? Are, do we want to do we want to look at the discussion section, or maybe we can look at the hints? Think about the input was only one digit. Then you need to add up as many ones as the value of this digit. Okay, so we kind of made it that far. If the input has multiple digits, then you can solve for each digit independently, and merge the answers to form numbers that add up to that digit. If the input has multiple digits, you can solve for each digit independently. You need to add up as many ones as the value of this digit. So I mean, we would need a three and we would need a two. Okay, kind of the same thing that we did. The answer is equal to the max digit. So okay, that's fine. I mean, the what we what we had determined before looking at hints was apparently the last hint, which means we're close to the answer. But let's see. So just return max digit. It's from a very credible sort of leak coder in my own estimation. But let's see if there's any cool tricks that we can take here. So assume the max digit in n is x. Because the deci binary only contains zero and ones, we need at least x numbers to sum up a digit x. Now we can construct an answer. Take n equals 135 as example. We initialize 5 equals, oh, someone from New York is calling me. We initialize 5 deci binary numbers with a length of 3. For the first digit, we'll need n zero number with one. For the second digit, we'll need the first with one, okay? Finally, we have one, one, one. Okay, so O of L is what? Where it's the length? n dot carcat at i minus zero. Are they parsing? What are they, and what are they doing here that makes it maybe faster? They're taking the res they're doing n dot carcat of i minus zero. So I guess it's the distance. I hmm. Is that faster than parsing it? I mean, is parse int like or let's do parse int. I'm I'm really sorry for this like terrible edge 
new tab experience. Can we just do a daily dot dev? Let's let's do this to get something more related to what we're doing here. Turn on. Okay. I want to turn it on. No, wait, wait. Let's go to do, 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 extensions, manage extensions, daily dot dev on. Beautiful. Skip this. Nice. I don't want to see that other stuff anymore. <laughs> so let's look at parse int time complexity JavaScript. Time complexity of parse int. This is not stated explicitly in the specification, but you may assume that it's a linear by the number of characters represent the value. Okay, so parse int is linear because it oh it makes sense. We have to go through every single digit and every single character in that string that's trying to parse. So what if we instead do what they're trying to do there? Can we do C dot car code at? I guess that's only okay. So if we look at the ASCII table, is there a way? Let's see. If we're looking at the digits, the digits zero through nine, the decimal is this. Oh, but that's still not really going to give me, or or is it actually? If we got. So if we do minus 48, if I do nine dot car code at zero minus 48, that gives us nine. Interesting, so maybe 48. So in previous questions, you may have seen me use 27 or rather 97 to normalize the mapping of lowercase letters to their respective indices in an array. What I mean by that is, you know, I'll subtract 97 from A to put it in index 0, 98 from B, or 97 from B to put it in index 1. Maybe now the new 97, like 48 is the new 97, you know? That could be something that we can use to normalize digits. So let's try that out. So let's go here. Although, if you think about it, we're parsing a digit, but the digit's only a single character. So it might end up being the same, but let's see. Let's do digit dot car code at zero minus 48. So that will just give us a number without having to parse it. So that's three and three. Let's run the next ones. And let's just see if we submit this a couple times, if we just automatically improve. So three, eight, and nine, three, eight, and nine. So if we run this guy, 43.69. So the first run is already better than the previous run, the previous runs that we've done. So let's continue on here. 48.93. I'll give it another submission just to see how we're doing. Got to wait a little bit because I don't have a premium subscription. So, all right, so we ended off with 52.62. So it looks like if we, it looks like maybe Parsing a digit, if it's just a single digit, might be better done with something like this versus using parse int, which I think is pretty cool. That's definitely something good. That, that's like my big takeaway here. But yeah, interesting question. Never have solved it before. So it, honestly, it does feel very nice to be able to solve it now. Let's go ahead and continue on to our next one. Sub rectangle queries. Wow. Okay, so... Oh, I think I remember this one. But I know there's a better way of doing it. So it says implement the class subrectangle queries, which receives a row by column rectangle as a matrix of integers in the constructor and supports two method. Update rectangle updates all values with new value in the rectangle. Okay, and then get value return the current value. So really all we're doing and the brute force way to do this is just to constantly update the values. But I think I'd, I'd like to try something that I've normally seen in the discussions, but I've never really thought about it. And that could be a good way for us to continue on in, in this stream here. So let me again, I know I've said this a lot already, but I really do need to make sure that everything's good on the stream. So, okay, cool. So let's get to the next one here. So sub rectangle queries. The first thing we need to do is we have the rectangle. So this is row by column rectangle as a matrix of integers update rectangle so get value update rectangle all right this has update rectangle and get value now the rectangle is this just oh, okay so we already get the rectangle so if we said something like 
like to dislike on this one. Wow, yeah, I know it's crazy. What's up, John? I thought I thought for a second you said I'm going to dislike this one, as in like my stream, and I'm like, oh man. I guess the audience didn't react well to me starting to do medium questions. Yeah, so if you're just joining now, I decided that just for fun, I think I'm gonna start breaking it up so I do medium questions on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I'll keep doing med uh, easy ones on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That way I think I can broaden my content a little bit and different people will be able to access different questions. So I think in that way I'm able to help the most amount of people and it still gets us learning more and you know flexing our brains more. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But yeah, good to see you again. Thanks for, thanks for being consistent on the stream. Let's do this rectangle equals rectangle. Medium is the blank. I'm gonna. I'm going to assume you probably said medium is the shit. <laughs> I, I I think because medium is definitely where you get the most of the value, or most of the value. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, so inside of here, update sub rectangle. What we want to do is we want to start at a specific row column, and we want to go all the way up until the next row and the next column. So I think if we do like for let row equals row one, row less than, let's see. Now, when it says row two, is row two inclusive? Does it mean that we also need to change? Well, I guess let's just try row less than row two, row plus plus for let column equals column one, column less than column two, column plus plus. We can say this rectangle at row column equals new value. And then I think here it's literally just to say return this rectangle at row column. Let me just see, because sometimes these questions, so one, 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 oh wow, okay. Let's see what we messed up here. Well, it can't be because I'm not doing inclusive, right? I, I feel like, let me see. Oh, this is not what I wanted to do. Okay, let's go here. Let me open up Excaladraw. Will Excaladraw help me here? Right, so if I'm starting at a position, I'm starting at a specific row in a specific column. I'm going to go from that column, column one, all the way to column two, column plus plus this rectangle row column equals new value, okay? And then we'll increase it as long as it's less than row two. And then for let column equals column one, column less than column two. Okay. And this one should be get value, return this rectangle at row column, updates all values with new value in their subject, sub rectangle whose upper left coordinate is row one column one and bottom right coordinate is row two column two so is it because it needs for us to go I've like done this one before and I know it's like okay there you go so it, it needed to be less than or equal now even if this works which I think it will let's just try it out for our different test cases so that looks fine let's go ahead and submit it I think the faster way of doing this, this this is weird. Like this is almost the opposite where you might think this is like an easy question, but it's labeled as a medium because they want for you to think of it differently. And if I remember correctly, the top answer wanted you to sort of be able like we might be we might be unnecessarily updating cells that already have the new value. I think that's the reason why we can do better. Because here we're brute forcing it in the sense that we're always doing, I guess like here. So after this update, the rectangle looks, let's just look at the explanation here, right? So we have this sub rectangle queries. We have all these right here. We update all of them to five. And then it says update rectangle to 10. So like we're only updating the last ones, but, and I, and I guess that's fine because it's just these. But what if it was, hmm. I'm trying to think of like, does it even make sense 
if I'm gonna if I'm sitting oh click the wrong thing if I'm sitting at like a five and I do what well, this is row column so row three column zero do all of them I mean I was almost gonna check to see like oh if we if the cell already has the same value but honestly adding a conditional here to skip that iteration is almost as fast as just assigning that cell the value anyway update rectangle is there like a better one here 100 100 there will be at most 500 operations considering both methods it can go up to 100 rectangle eye length if we submit again if I remember correctly I, I thought that wow 5.26 yeah so obviously we're, we're not doing something good here update sub rectangle like what if I had let's see if we can draw something out here if we had five 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 and then five 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 so if I wanted to update if I came in here and I was like I want to update from zero zero to two two then I guess we'd have to do all of them right now how would I know how would I know that like all of them were five like if this if this was four here for example if this was four how can I make it so like I only update this and I don't even touch these that's that that's where I think this question is going and I wonder if we can maybe use let's see it's definitely it's definitely tricky to think of it like that and if like we run this again is it gonna still say it's gonna still stay like way down there okay so this time was 90 so now I'm not even sure if it's worth it but you know what like John pointed out and like I said in the beginning of the stream is it worth it for me to spend so much time thinking about this look at the like to dislike ratio the, the two questions that we've done so far have been really bad in terms of like to dislike so let's let's read the discussion and let's try to learn as much as we can from it and I kind of want to see because this this person although I know it's highly rated I almost want to see if this okay well they say explanation but I'm not sure I see an explanation there brief analysis okay so we remember the original rectangle then we record all the updates hey what's up Rashawn then we record all updates as coordinates and values when querying we first going through updates newest to oldest if our position is within we return the value for that update if there is no matching update we use the value from the original rectangle okay so what are they doing here they're doing a swap okay I'm guessing this is like a a way to copy yeah what's up Rashawn hey no problem man I, I know a lot of people that have been going to like some colds it seems like a seasonal flu sort of thing my girlfriend just recovered from one so yeah, no worries, man. Glad to see you here. Glad that you're feeling better. And welcome to the stream. Yeah, you may have noticed we're doing something new today. We're doing medium questions. Gonna start alternating my streams to accommodate easy and medium questions, just to add a little bit of spice, have a little more fun with it. So it's pretty exciting. So update sub rectangle int row one, column one. Okay, so here, let's just say this is like a copy, right? Then what they do here, update sub rectangle to subs I guess subs here push back row one column one okay so they keep a separate data structure that holds the coordinates of the updated values and now they're going through subs which contains the new updated values if subs of I zero is less than or equal to zero I two return rect row column Okay, this is interesting. It's like a very specific one that we're returning here. Subs I of four. 
return rect row column. Since the rectangle sizes are limited to 100, we can just go through each position and update its value. How does loop looping from newest to oldest help? Let's suppose there is an entry which has been updated twice, so going from newest to oldest would return the latest value. We record all updates as coordinates and values. When querying, we first go through updates newest to oldest. If our position is within, okay, so if subs of i0 is less than or equal to row, less than column, and row, this, this part here I don't really understand too much, we just return the most updated value. Subs of i0 is less than or equal to row, okay, and subs of i1 is less than or equal to column, and row is less than or equal to subs of i2, and column is less than or equal to subs of i3, then we return whatever is in 4, which is the new value. Because I guess that means if it's, le yeah, I don't really understand that piece. There's no need to update the subrectangle. We're not updating the actual rectangle that we stored. We're just going through the queries and using them to see if there was any request to update the value in the given range and then return an answer. Here, update requests are O of 1. So I guess we're kind of heavy lifting is done in the get value method. So in the range, if subs of i0 is less than or equal to, oh, wait a second, okay. If it's less than or equal to the row and less than or equal to the column, and the row is less than or equal to subs of i2, and column, okay, so I guess that this just means that this number is within the range of things that we, okay, let's see if that makes any sense. So if we're, oh, Su, uh, Sukantian underscore is now following, yeah, thanks so much, man, that's awesome. Really appreciate it. I should, I should, what's up, Lee Code Reddit? Hey, what's up? Thanks so much for being here, that's awesome. Always, always happy to see new people. How did I make that up? Oh man, I, I can go on a little bit of a tangent here. So I'll try and be as quick as I can. So back in November of last year, I was literally in the position that I felt like many of us feel that I just wasn't good enough for lead code. You know, I couldn't like do lead code and I was in this like pit of despair and I was feeling really bad for myself. So I did what it seems a lot of people do on Reddit, which is they try and make a, a Discord focused on lead code. And I, I actually did do that, and I'm very happy of the Discord I created back then. Shameless plug, but we're now over 1,500 members, and we've been growing ever since I created it back in December, or November, I forget. And I even have that, ex I, I even have the original post on my account right here. So my lead code experience after much Sean Air, it's the first post I ever made, and it got me like, you know, it, it, it motivated me to go ahead and do a discord server and yeah i literally called the discord server leak code reddit because i made a post on reddit about leak code so i just called it leak code reddit and then i just kind of that name kind of just stuck and now we're here today doing leak code for fun and having a great time so yeah appreciate you you, you coming i should mention to you that i i'm going to be focusing more on twitch in terms of like live streaming but I also have a ton of content on my YouTube channel, so that, that would also be a really good place for you to go check out because I have other stuff that I do there that's not on these live streams. But anyway, thanks for joining. I, for fun, decided to do medium questions today, so you, you really couldn't have come at a better time. I think I lost. Did I lose my leak code tab? No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, yeah. What I wanted to do was go on Excaladraw and see how this made sense because Row one, row two, so update. If I go from like zero, zero, and I go to, well, let's just pick an arbitrary one. Let's go from, let's go from row one, column one, to row two, column two. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks so much, man. I truly, truly appreciate it. That's so awesome. I hope that, I hope that it helps you in your journey. I hope that it helps you stay accountable. I know it's helped a lot of people. We have like a progress channel on there. There's been a lot of people that through the Discord have been able to like land their dream job just because they feel like the community is active. So 
Yeah, thanks for joining, man. So one, one, and two, two. So if subs of i zero, let's say now I want to get value at like, okay, what would happen if we got one that's not in range? Let's say I wanted to get one zero. So one is less than or equal to one, right? And then column, let me see, if one is less than or equal to row, which is one, and it's less than or equal to two, okay. And then row, and then what's the other one? If column, if subs of i1 is less than column, so if it was 1, 0, if 0 is less than that, and 0 is less than 2, then that means we just return the thing that's at i4, which is new. See, that doesn't make sense to me. Like this line right here doesn't, well, okay, no, I get this part, I think. I don't get this logic here. At least not yet, and I don't I don't want to spend probably much more time on it. So let's see if we can get to uh, another one. All right, is strictly palindromic another terrible question? We're starting off our medium journey here, not too good, but we've at least done all the questions, so it, we're we're persevering. If anything, we're getting through it. All right, so an integer n is strictly palindromic if for every base b between two and n minus two inclusive, the string representation of the well the string representation of the integer n in base b is palindromic okay oh but do i have to deal with bases here oh we only consider base two between two and n minus two in base two nine equals one zero zero one but you know what no with this one I need to come back to this when I remember how to like go from one to another one. Like, uh, or actually, can we just do a parse int? Because mm, we have n is nine. In base two, n equals one zero zero one, which is palindromic. In base three, n equals one zero zero. Like, actually, what would happen if we got? I mean, what we could do. If I did parse int of 9 in base 3, okay, that's not even a number. Because we can't pick an arbitrary, yeah, okay. So that doesn't actually work. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to bother with this one because I'm just not good with the conversion from one base to another one. And maybe that's not even what I need. But I really want to see if we can get to a, a question that's good. Merge nodes between, ah, there we go, okay. And this looks like a nice one that we can draw. So you're given the head of a linked list, which contains a series of integers separated by zeros. The beginning and end of the linked list will have node value equals zero. For every two consecutive zeros, merge all the nodes lying in between them into a single node whose value is the sum of all the merged nodes. The modified list should not contain any zeros. Return the head of the modified linked list. So return the head of the modified linked list. I mean, we could create a new linked list, but I'd rather not do that. I think there's a way that we can do this neatly. Even without, yeah, cause like this one here, uh, it might look kind of weird, but we can say like the head here will equal the sum of this, and then we'll point to the next one. And then the sum of this will equal this one. And then when we get to the last one, we just set this one equal to null. I know that might not seem, because this is, I, I've done this question before, and let me show you what I used to do. And now let me show you what I want to do. So I'm going to I'm gonna draw this whole thing out. It's, a, it's kind of a long linked list one here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I think we have eight nodes here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we'll draw our nice arrows in between here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, we'll do this one, do this one, do this one, do that one, do this one, do this one. <laughs> okay, cool, now let's get our numbers in here. Zero, three, one, zero, four, five, 
two and zero. What I used to do for this question was a very common trick. It's called like using a sentinel node. So I would sort I would start it like this one. I'm gonna use my classic diamond pointer here. I always do this. If if you've all been watching my streams for a while, you know I do this. Essentially what I do is I get the sum of these until I get to the next zero. So it'll be three plus one is four. Now I'm at a zero. So what I do is from here, I create a new node with the sum that I just got, and I don't want that to be anything. So I'll make this four, right? And then I'll do the same thing. Four plus five is nine, plus two is 11. I'll get to this one. I'll create another node here, right? The same, same sort of thing. Oh, and then we would just be done. But I'm wondering, we, I think I can get away with not even having to create any nodes at all and instead modify existing ones. And the, the, what I'm thinking of doing is, okay, so we have our head pointer that we know we never want to change. Typically, you don't change your head pointer because then you lose, well, I mean, you lose the head of your linked list. So if we have, let's say I have head pointing to this initially. And then I'll have, let's say, well, I'll, I'll just use this existing one, right? So I could still start here and do the same thing. And maybe what I can do here is when I get to a zero, I change the value of head to be four. And then maybe I can say four, four dot next now is equal to, and this time I'll just use a marker, maybe four dot next is equal to this. And then from there, I'll continue. I'll get the sum 4, 5, 2, that's 11. So then I'll make the value of this 11. And then I'll make its next point to here. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I'll make its next point to here, right? And then we'll just be done. And that's it. We'll be done, but we'll, we'll be done. But let's see. Okay, yeah, we'll get to this zero. If this zero is the last zero, then we'll just set this pointer to be null. So I'll just draw another one here. I'll make this one like a different color, right? We'll just say like null. For anyone coming from like an electronics background, this is ground. I, I like to, I sometimes represent null like this. So we can just set that to be null. I think that's something I want to try out just because it's different from how I previously have done things. And I think it, it could be, it could be fun. So let's go with that and let's see what we can do here. So merge nodes. So I want to have both of these together. Okay, so what are my constraints here? Am I going to get a list that has at least something? Okay, so I'm going to have at least three, so I don't have to worry about a no list. So we have the head. Here I can say let runner equals zero. And maybe what we should do is I can say let tail equals head. And, and I'll, I'm gonna sort of use this to my advantage. So let's see, do I just wanna start in the next one? Maybe runner should be head.next. Runner should be head.next. And now I can say, let's see, while while runner dot next okay here i can do let sum cluster equals runner dot val but we'll say that if if runner dot val equals zero we'll do something else if runner dot next equals to null we'll also do something else We'll just say sum plus or equals runner val. This is kind of the template I want to use, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go from there. And maybe here I'll say let sum. Let me put it up here. Let sum equals zero. All right. So if we start if we start going back to our picture here, we have our runner. Let me open this up again. We have our runner being up here. Can we zoom out? Ooh, nice, beautiful. Okay. I hope it's not too tiny for people that are watching. So we have our runner that's here. We know that this is gonna be zero in the beginning, but we're, well, actually we're starting at head.next. 
Okay, so while runner.next, which it is, if runner.val equals zero, no. If runner.next equals null, no. Else we do sum plus or equals runner.val. So right now I'm just gonna create sum here to keep track. So we'll have three. Let's of course not forget to advance our runner. Runner equals runner.next. So now we'll come to the one here. So if runner.val is zero, which is not, let me change this to zero. If runner.next is null, which is not, else we'll just add to our sum, so we'll get one. Now we'll go to our next one. So now if runner.val is zero, let's see, you know what? I should probably check to see if runner.next is null first. And then here we'll say if runner.val is equal to zero. I think I wanna do it that way. So if runner.val is zero, then I think what I can do is I can say tail.val equals to sum and then tail.next tail.next equals my runner and then tail equals runner so what this will do is it will essentially do that arrow part that I had there so it'll set tail.next well let's actually go one by one right tail.val is sum before I even get there let me also write tail Make sure we have everything like we want. We'll point tail to here. So tail.val is equal to the sum, which is four. Then we'll say tail.next is equal to runner, which is indicated by that diamond. Tail.next is equal to runner. And then we'll finally say that tail now is equal to runner. So we'll move tail here and I'll also remove this arrow. Cool. And we also should say uh, sum equals zero. So now we're back at sum equals zero, runner equals runner.next. If runner.next is null, no. If it's zero, no. So now we just start adding again, we get to a four. We keep going, this is not zero or the next is not null, so we add it, so that's nine. We get to our two, this is not zero, nor is its next null, so we add, we get to 11. Now here, let's see, runner.next is null, but see, this is where we're gonna run to issue, but it's also zero. So I think what we could do is we can actually combine these and do something special. Now, if runner.next is equal to null, well, actually, no, it's fine, because if runner.next is equal to null, we can still do this, right? Tail.val is going to equal sum, which will be 11. Tail.next here, oh, the real rad, one at one on cons on consumer the real rad one at one consumer on consumer thank you so much for the follow man i really do appreciate it if you're following me on twitch that's really awesome and i'm definitely going to continue doing my live streams on twitch daily or however often i can i i would also recommend for you to check me out on youtube on my youtube channel i have all my streams plus any additional content that i do so I, I'll do things like I publish content for front-end applications using vanilla JavaScript, and I also have more recently started doing playlists for the LeetCode Explore cards. Those videos are only available on my YouTube channel, and there's actually one other thing that's only available on YouTube as of now, and I'll say that at the end. So here, tail.val is sum, tail.next is null, and then I think here, really, we can just break because then what happens? We get to runner, so maybe this should just be runner. So tail.val is sum, tail.next. So there's maybe something better that we can do in here. I think this is pretty much okay. And then at the end, we just return head, right? Return head. Let me expand this and now let's see what we get. tail.val is sum, which happens for both of these. Tail equals runner, that only happens then. Okay, and sum equals zero. Okay, that's fine. Let me run this and see what we get, at least for our first test case. So we get four and 11, that's cool. So at least we got the first one, right? One, three, four. So if it's working for more complicated ones, let me of course try an easy one, like zero, zero, one, zero. We should just get one back, right? Okay, we got one and one, so that's very good. 
Okay, so should I optimize before submitting? Let me submit first and then let's see what we can do and maybe make this a little bit nicer. Okay, 20.14%. 20, 20 I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy because I do feel like if we think about the best conceivable runtime, this is linear. We only go through the list once. So O of N time complexity and it's constant space complexity. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. 73.23. Okay, well, I think what we can do here is I can say that runner.next equals null or runner.val is equal to zero. And I guess here, we'll, we'll just do the same thing again. Um, if runner.next is equal to null, which I, you know what, maybe it's really not the best. Oh, actually, if runner.next is equal to null, else we'll know that we'll just be in the other case. So tail.val equals sum will always happen. Tail.next equals null should only happen for this one. What am I trying to do in terms of like what I'm doing right now or like at all? You mean like with this refactoring thing that I'm doing? I see tail.next is runner. Okay, but then see like for the else, I mean, it, it might not really be that much nicer. If anything, this looks more complicated, right? Now we have like this whole thing there. And even if I end this here, tail.next is null, else tail.next is runner, but then we're already modifying tail here. So yeah, actually, I don't think that's like the best way for us to go. I think leaving it like this is probably fine. I'm pretty happy with this. Let me just, before I, yeah, cause now I undoed some more stuff. So let's do this. One, three, four, one and one, one and one. Yeah, so I like that I tried something new here. Like I said previously, I would try and create new nodes as I went along. So anytime I, I would see a zero, I would use that trick with like a sentinel node where I create like a dummy node. And then when I get to a zero, I create a new node and I point the sentinel to it. But this one, I'm just modifying the existing nodes. I'm not actually really creating anything new. So I think, I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty neat. Let's also see what the discussion is here. As we've been doing with all the questions so far. Recursive versus iter okay, so it looks like there's a top one without a dummy node, which is cool. That's what we just tried. Let's read this one. Let me see. I'm getting some messages here. Just want to make sure everything's okay. All right, cool. So for these modification questions, recursion is a great tool in these linked list questions. My intuition: whenever the process is having repeated tasks again and again, especially in the linked list, we use recursion. I guess that makes sense because we can recurse all the way to the zero, and then maybe as we start backtracking, we modify the list. So let's see, skip M nodes, delete N nodes, reverse, get some between, oh, okay, I see. These are questions of, types of questions for recursion. You see all above questions are having the same tasks again and again. That's why I thought of recursion. In recursion, we only have to consider about the first part and the rest will be done by the principle of recursion. Fetch the sum between two consecutive zero, assign the sum to first node, call function for the next parts, whatever was returned from the function, assign it to the next of the first node on which we assigned the sum previously. We're not creating any extra node for sum, we're just assigning the sum to the already existing node. Okay. So I wanna, I wanna look at this one, so, cause this is what we did here. So I'll start, point to the first node, while end value not equal to zero, we do the uh, this is what sum plus or equal. Okay, and then we continue on we assign sum to the first node make this connect to the first node of the next part Go to the next part. So this seems Very this seems very similar to what we just did and again. I like this because Previously I would always create new nodes. I would do the dummy technique, but now You know, I, I think and I'm not saying this is necessarily because of any amount of easy questions. I've done. I just think that I, I just knew, I knew there was a better way of doing it. And I want to try it out. And fortunately we got a chance to do it. So that's awesome. All right. So I think all in all, this is, this is awesome because I, I think we did very well for the first video that we started doing mediums. So now we're sitting at five medium questions, right? 272 easies and five medium questions. So we're on our way, making a lot of progress. 
I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna update my my website because this is a good question I think yeah very nice question I'll update my website to now include medium questions by the way for anyone that's tuning in now I have a website called raphaelslist.com raphaelslist.com has a list of all the top quality questions that we've done on these streams since I've started in July 16th so you can just look at all these questions on my easy list and I'll, I'll create a medium one now you can search for different ones. You can search for questions related to the topic. And I think the cool thing, the thing where you'll find the greatest value is each one of these points to a chapter in an existing YouTube stream that I've done. So you can click on one of these. And like I said, it's just going to take you directly to the chapter question. where we solve that question. So I think that's pretty neat. I'll you know, do the same thing for medium questions starting. And we also have a section here for playlists. And this playlist, for example, is the Lee Code Beginner's Guide. So you also have a whole playlist dedicated to the Lee Code Beginner's Guide. I'm going to be starting on the Lee Code Explorer 101 card now. I think it's called Arrays 101. That's the one I'm going to be doing now. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in looking at tailored videos for Arrays 101. Again, this is only on YouTube, not on Twitch. And finally, a lot of you know that I recently started a podcast and I plan on getting more people involved with this podcast i have the next one set up tentative tentatively for september 30th it's someone that a member of the discord recommended to me someone that has you know has since started doing lead code tutoring they also have their own discord channel they were at the top of the leaderboards for several contests so i think it could be something cool just to have someone else on board talk about their lead code experience how it's impacted them and you know how they are where they are today and I should, I should even mention on top of this that I've since put this on Spotify. So if you use Spotify, you can also listen to this just right on Spotify. It's right here. So I encourage you all to go check that out. I had a lot of fun doing it, and I definitely will be doing a lot more of this in the future. So with that being said, again, I had a lot of fun doing today's stream. We started medium questions. So Tuesday, Thursday, medium questions. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We got to keep doing easy questions for the people that do like them. And with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your Tuesday. <clears throat> Thank you all so much for tuning in.